Let's talk about the upcoming Vancouver Canucks season. Now, there are a lot of people out there who are talking, they're giving their opinions, and for the most part, I'm seeing a lot of lists out there saying that the Canucks are going to be one of the bottom feeder teams in the league, just like they were last year, you know. They finished very bad. They were third last in the league. They got themselves the fifth overall pick, drafted Ole Ulevi. That said and done. Now, next season, I believe the Canucks will be much better. I don't think they're going to overachieve like they did two years ago um, when Willie Desjardins first got his job here and when Verbatov got his first year here. I don't think we're going to be um, 100 points good like we were two years ago, but I definitely think we won't be in the same place as we were last year, which is where a lot of people seem to have the Canucks ranked on the upcoming season predictions lists. Now, there are a few reasons as to why I believe the Canucks will be better than last season, and the majority of the things on this list are things that the Canucks either lacked or had none of last year, and the first thing on my list is Brandon Sutter. Now, Sutter, he was injured for a very, very long time. Looking at the trade that sent Sutter to the Canucks and Benino back to the Penguins, Benino played more playoff games this year than Sutter had games in total, which really is a representation of how injured Sutter was this season. And really, last season when the Canucks had Sutter out, we forced Bo Horvat into that second line center role for a brief period of time at the beginning of the season. Sutter was actually the winger on the Sedin line. Horvat was the second line center because people were thinking, wow, this kid is great. He looks like he's ready for the second line center. And really taking that into account, Bo Horvat was forced to be the guy, the penalty killer, the second line center, the Kessler on the team. And, you know, it's kind of a weird comparison to compare Bo Horvat last season to Kessler, but Sutter is going to be the guy on the second line next season, and he's going to be the guy who's going to be the PK star. Bo Horvat won't have to be the guy anymore, giving him much more room to play freely and to do crazy things. So he'll be forced down to the third line, Sutter will be on the second line, and really it's like getting another free agent because Sutter only played like, what, like 20-something games last season? And out of an 82-game season, that's not that much. The next point on the Canucks being better than last season is the development of Horvat, Berchi, and Ben Hutton. Notice I didn't put Vertanen on this list, and there's a reason for that. Bo Horvat will be a great player next year. He's got... Horvat and Berchi are kind of in the same spot where they had some great shining moments last season, and they developed some insane chemistry. Remember that preseason game? The youngins line of Berchi, Horvat, Vertanen, that was a great line to watch, and Berchi and Horvat really did have some great moments. Berchi and Horvat each getting like about 15 goals last season, something like that. Horvat actually had quite a bit of points, so I'm expecting a full-out improvement over that because he's just getting better and better, along with Berchi. Not even to mention Ben Hutton, who was the dark horse on the Canucks last season. I remember just about a year ago at this time, I was saying to people, yeah guys, this guy Ben Hutton coming out of the University of Maine, he's going to be pretty darn good, look out for this guy. And no one knew who he was, then he made the team, showed off excellent preseason games, and then the Canucks management were like, yeah, you got, you're good, you got a spot in the team. And he proved to be, I, in my opinion, the best defenseman on the Canucks last season, maybe other than Tanev, but... Really, Ben Hutton's a 22, 23-year-old. He's going to be much better this year than he was last year, which is kind of scary because he was very, very good last year. He's probably going to play on a line with Good Branson, another guy who has some NHL experience. He was drafted early. He's got NHL experience. He knows what it's like to be the guy. A lot of Florida fans were really disappointed when he was traded because they were saying he's going to be our future captain. So getting this leadership involved in the youngins with Horvat and Good Branson, it's a good idea, guys. It's a good idea. Speaking of the young guys getting better, Emerson Edom showed some very, very good wheels almost immediately after the Canucks were eliminated from playoff contention. For some reason, after that point, he was just flying all over the place, and he was probably one of the most exciting Canucks to watch in those few games ending last season. He was the reason the Canucks season ended last year, because he got that shootout winner. And really, I'm just looking forward to seeing what Emerson Edom will be able to do this year on a Canucks team that really has nothing to lose. 
The next point on this list is Louis Erickson being the line mate of the Sedines. Now, this is going to be probably the most talked about story this year. Erickson coming in from Boston, signing as a free agent for six years. He's going to play on the Sedine line with his two fellow countrymen, Henrik and Daniel Sedin. He's played with them in the past at World Championships, the Olympics, etc. He's had some experience with the Sedines and, of course, what kind of player won't benefit from playing with the Sedines? Yannick Hansen was a 20-goal scorer last year. Louis Eriksson getting quite a bit of points last season. Just imagine what he'll be able to get with the Sedines coming onto his wings. And really, this is just... A lot of people are saying, why, why'd they get Eriksson? Like, they need to get younger. They need to get all these draft picks and young guys. And really... I want to see some entertaining hockey, and this will be entertaining as hell watching Louis Erickson tearing things up with the Sedins. The next thing that the Canucks fans have going for them is the top six pairing for the defensive lines. Of course, Lucas Pisa will probably be there, and you know how the Canucks feel about Lucas Pisa. But on the other side, we're going to be having either Triamkin or Philip Larson. Now, Larson is a long shot. I have no idea how he's going to fare out. We traded a fifth for him, for his rights at least. He's gonna he's signing a contract and all that, coming into Vancouver. But if he doesn't work out, we got ourselves Nikita Tramkin. And this guy is huge, 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 huge. Everyone knows that. Everyone was excited to see him play for the Canucks. I remember um, going to the Winnipeg game. Um, at Rogers Arena, and Nikita Triamkin was on the ice for the warm-up, and everyone was cheering. It was great. He's really improved his game since that first little stretch that he had. Those last few games with the Canucks, it was just great to watch. He's really improving himself in front of Ryan Miller and Markstrom and all that. He's getting himself some good opportunities to improve, and having him playing with Spiza rather than, let's say, a Matt Bartkowski or a Yannick Weber, it's an instant improvement. And Larson, well, if he doesn't pan out, we always have Tramkin, but if Larson does succeed as well, then that's another bonus. We get ourselves another good defenseman. Next up, we have no more Weber and no more Bartkowski. Really, do I have to talk about this? Bartkowski was the tank commander, and Weber... Oh boy, after that first playoff season against Calgary, the next season, everyone was like, look at Weber. Man, he was a good guy before the Canucks met the Flames in the playoffs, and they just basically exposed him for how he plays. So, it, you know what, it's... It's unfortunate, but I'm, I'm happy to see them gone. Same thing with Radim Verbata, the guy who had um, a great first season with the Canucks. 60 plus points, 30 goals, and then the next season he's all like, yeah, I want to play with Bo Horvat, and he does play with Bo Horvat, and he doesn't do nearly as well as he did the season beforehand. Then after the season's done, he's like, yeah, I didn't have good line mates. So really, it's just the attitude and everything. I think Burroughs or Daniel might have called him out on it, something like that. But, you know, it's interesting, and, uh, you know, I'm happy to see him gone as well. Hopefully, Erickson does not have a deep decline like Verbata did after one year. The next thing we have looking forward for us is Markstrom and Miller. Now, these guys have been solid for, like, the last few years, and no matter what somebody says about the Canucks, they're good goalies. It's the team in front of them that is the reason why they weren't doing successful. Markstrom and Miller really didn't have that much good stats last year, but their play on the ice was just amazing, especially Markstrom grabbing that puck with his open glove hand, and that was great. We also got ourselves Anton Rodin, who will probably slot into the Canucks lineup next season, but where? I have no idea. The success he'll have, I have no idea as well, but um, he was, like, nominated for the Swedish MVP award, even though he missed, like, a lot of the season. He won the Most Outstanding Player award. He was on pace to breaking the Swedish scoring league record if he didn't get injured, and he's, what, 25, 26, something like that, so he's still on the younger side of things, so he's got some room to develop, and uh, it's just interesting to see what he'll be able to bring to the table. And... Another guy who the Canucks might be able to bring onto the team next year is Ole Ulevi, and really it could be a Ben Houghton-esque story where in training camp and in the preseason he's really well, and then the Canucks are like, yeah, okay, we gotta free up a spot for this guy because he's pretty darn good. And I don't expect that to happen, I think Ulevi will play in London next year, but if he does make the Canucks, good job, and if he does make the Canucks, then you know he made it for a reason. 
going into some predictions, I believe that a Sedin can get 70 points again. I think one Sedin will get at least 70, the other Sedin will get 60. The Sedins could finish top 10 in scoring as well if Ericsson does what he's being proclaimed to do. I also believe Ericsson will be able to get 30 goals this year. That Sedin line is going to be as dangerous as it was two years ago, and I believe Ericsson will be one of the best line mates the Sedins ever had. Horvat or Berchi could also get 20 goals, heck why not even both? The Canucks could benefit from two young 20 goal scorers on the second line, and Horvat or Berchi are very, very well capable of getting 20 goals in my opinion. I also think that Branson will play very, very, very well with Hutton, and that hutton good branson line will eventually be as good as the Edler Tanev line, which will probably be the first line. The Canucks will also be a wild card or just out of the playoffs in my opinion. I think we are good enough to make the playoffs as a wild card, but not good enough to tag up against one of the three Pacific slots. I don't think we're going to be able to beat guys like LA, San Jose, Anaheim for that spot, but I think we might be able to get a wild card, so that's alright. Next up, the last prediction I have is that Vertanen will get top line minutes in the AHL. Now, Vertanen is a guy that a lot of fans are saying, yeah, he needs to be on the Canucks, he's that guy who can run people over and make plays, and that's what the Canucks need, they need the Todd Bertuzzi type player, but a lot of other people are saying, yeah, you, did you see him last year? He needs some AHL development time. Playing fourth line minutes on the Canucks in a role where you're just getting shoved around with all the grinders on the bottom six is not going to, is not going to help him develop rather than getting first-line minutes in the AHL under Travis Green. So, I think that the AHL will be the best for Vertanen's development, and I think that's where he's going to go next season. Now, the Canucks are also going to be bottom feeders, according to a lot of people, and of course, I've already said my justifications, but I don't agree with that. But I would prefer the Canucks to be bottom feeders rather than not making the playoffs. For me, it's make the wild card spot or be last. And really, that's just how I see things. Benning's goal is to build a competitive team of leadership that will give the rookies a winning environment to develop in. And I think he's done a great job with that. I think it's a good mindset to get into that winning is the best thing possible. And forcing the tanking rule or the tanking belief on your team is really, like, how can you do that to somebody? Of course, at the end of the day, the goal is always to win, but some teams want to win more than other teams, and I think Benning has done a good job in building a team that wants to win. And this winning attitude, this winning um, momentum that the Canucks have gotten in their older core is really going to influence the younger guys to grow up to be competitive as the Sedins and as Erickson and as Burroughs, all these guys who are in their later years will be mentoring the younger guys into a winning environment. I think that's a great system that Benning has built, it's a great team that he's built, and really, I'm just looking forward to next season because I think the Canucks are going to be very fun to watch. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're pausing, you're down to your so I can not subscribe to that side on gaming. And bye.